Welcome to the night sky. I'm Michael Martin, and through this monthly series, I'm gonna walk you through the best objects and events that you can go out to see in the nighttime sky. Here at Late Night Astronomy, we provide a wide range of resources to help get you into amateur astronomy, from product reviews, to viewing guides, to astrophotography. Whether you're a casual fan of the nighttime sky or have years of experience imaging objects in it, please like this video and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. Also, be sure to let me know in the comments section below what you plan to go out and see and any questions that you may have about the things that we can see in the heavens above. Now, sadly for the month of February, there are no major meteor showers for us to go out and see. So let's jump straight to the best views of our closest neighbor, the moon. Let's begin with the phases of the moon, and then we'll take a look at some lunar events this month as well. Beginning on February 1st, the new moon sets with the sun, meaning that there really won't be any opportunities to go out and see the moon around that time. Next up is its first quarter phase on February 8th. This is my favorite time to observe the moon with a pair of binoculars or a telescope, with the angle of the sunlight revealing a great wealth of detail on its surface. On the night of February 16th, the full moon, which can also be called the snow moon in February, rises right as the sun sets. The month ends with the last quarter moon following on February 23rd. There's an interesting event involving the moon and a couple stars that a member of my local astronomy club pointed out to me, and I wanted to share it with you all in this video as well. On the night of February 9th, around 11.39 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to move in front of two stars, and the event that we call this is known as an occult. Be sure to check your astronomy apps for the exact time for where you live. Understanding that the perspective of events like this will be a little bit different for everyone depending on your location around the world. Let's move deeper into space and take a look at the eight major planets of our solar system for this month. Mercury's the closest planet to the sun and boy is it a tough one to catch every single month. After a few weeks of enjoying it in the early evening, Mercury has moved back to being an early morning target with the best view of it coming around February 16th when it will be just 7 degrees above the horizon in the southeast around 6.30 a.m. But as Mercury always does, it slingshots back towards the horizon by the end of the month. Venus is a nice morning target as well as it continues to rise higher in the sky throughout the month. Check it out before sunrise on February 27th, when it makes a close approach to Mars and the Moon. Mars and Venus are paired well with each other for most of the month in the early morning sky, but our best views of Mars aren't going to be until later in 2022, when it and Earth make their close approach to each other later this year. February is a tough month for Jupiter and Saturn as well, with your only chance of viewing Jupiter being right after sunset before it gets too low to the horizon, and Saturn is pretty much unobservable this entire month as it remains close to the sun and slowly switches to becoming an early morning target. One interesting time to view Jupiter will be on February 2nd, when Jupiter and a very thin crescent moon spend some time together right after sunset in the southwest. Uranus continues to be a nice planet to view for most of the evening, but Neptune, like Jupiter, sets quite early in the evening. Not to be forgotten in our solar system are the leftover remnants that didn't make up the sun or planets billions of years ago. We call them comets and asteroids. Now, with several of us having some great views of Comet Leonard over the past few weeks, especially those of you that live in the Southern Hemisphere, I thought it would be a good idea to spend a little more time every month on some of the best views of asteroids and comets throughout the weeks to come. Now, temper your expectations for most of the things that are going to be on this list every month, 
because most of them will not appear as more than just a faint blurry fuzz or a dim pinpoint of light masked in the background of space. But that doesn't take away from the incredible views that you're gonna get, especially if you go out night to night and track how fast these objects are moving through our solar system compared to the background of space. For February, Comet 19P Borley will make its closest approach to the sun on February 2nd. To see it with a telescope, go outside about an hour after sunset and use your astronomy apps to help you track it through the constellation Pisces. Let's move over to the eastern sky and look up and try to find asteroid 20 Massalia, which will make its closest approach to Earth on February 5th as it travels through the constellation Cancer. This is going to be a tough one to catch, but larger scopes and darker skies will reveal a dim point of light that will move quite a bit from night to night compared to the background stars of deep space. As we leave our solar system behind, let's take a look at some of the best constellations and deep sky objects that you can go out to view for the month of February. We're going to begin with the constellations because that's really going to be the foundation of understanding the nighttime sky to find the deep sky objects that we're going to mention in just a little bit. The best constellations out right now under the winter sky are going to be Orion, Monoceros, Gemini, Arga, and Taurus. Once you've learned these constellations, let's go deeper and try to find some of the best deep sky objects that are within them. Now to see these objects, you're going to more than likely need a medium to larger size telescope to get the best views. You're also going to want limited light pollution and the moon to be completely out of the way when you're doing your observations or imaging. Let's take a look at the best deep sky objects that you can go out and see right now under the nighttime sky. Let's begin in the constellation Monoceros, where you will find the open clusters NGC 2244 inside the Rosetta Nebula and NGC 2264, the Christmas tree cluster inside the Cone Nebula. While these nebulas will be difficult to see with your telescope, the two clusters within them are an enjoyable part of space to explore with a pair of binoculars or a telescope. In between Auriga and Orion, and right at the edge of Taurus, you'll find the Crab Nebula. This object can be a difficult one to see under light polluted skies, but it is worth your time to try and hunt down due to it being one of the most famous supernova remnants in the night sky. Right across from it in the Gemini constellation, you will find M35. I'll be sure to leave a list of some more deep sky objects that I think are worth your time in the winter sky over on latenightastronomy.com. Those are just some of the incredible things that you can get out to see in the nighttime sky this February. Please be sure to let me know about your plans for observing or imaging this month, or any questions or suggestions that you may have for others in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support, and clear skies from Late Night Astronomy.